Over the last five years, it seems like pretty much everyone has, uh, let's say noticed Intel's consumer divisions tick, 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 eventually talk approach to generational performance improvements, including folks at AMD. But then on the surface, AMD seems to have pulled a page right out of Intel's playbook with their second generation AMD Ryzen desktop processors. But is there more to these than meets the eye? Well, I'm gonna let you know after this painful segue to our sponsor, Private Internet Access. Private Internet Access is the VPN service that encrypts all of your internet traffic and uses a safe, protected IP. It's got tons of other useful features and you can check it out at the link below. So what's the deal here? Is AMD replacing Ryzen 3, Ryzen 5, and Ryzen 7 with Ryzen 2? Mmm, not quite. While these are second generation, the Ryzen 7 2700X and the Ryzen 5 2600X clocking in at 8 and 6 cores respectively are not technically Zen 2. That's not gonna come until later. So what we're getting now are higher boost clocks with XFR applying to all cores and this one's pretty exciting, up to a 34% improvement to cache latency with AMD claiming a theoretical 3% performance bump from that second point alone. We're also getting up to dual channel DDR4-2933 support on the brand new X470 chipset motherboards, which from even our early testing translates into much better compatibility with high-speed memory kits. So all of this adds up to something that AMD is calling Zen Plus based on a tweaked 12 nanometer process that's been fine-tuned to push rated clock speeds higher without increasing the rated power consumption. Now, of course, we're gonna have to test all of these claims. So while we wait for this to uh, rise, ah, it's a yeast joke. <laughs> Let's go over our test setup. We'll be using both Intel's latest and AMD's previous gen consumer processors, which ah, it's done already. Go ahead and cut. Oh my God, this joke is so. I'm sorry, that whole thing with the oven was just a lead into a joke about mm, delicious Ryzen crust. Why don't we just get into the benchmarks? Starting with our gaming stuff. And yes, more terrible puns. How surprising. Ryzen second gen is ever so slightly faster than Ryzen first gen. Deus Ex Mankind Divided barely cared. Far Cry 5 actually got five to seven more FPS and CSGO, actually this one was a standout. Very nice. The differences though are less noticeable in 3D Mark and Unigen Superposition, putting second gen close enough that we technically observed higher numbers on our first gen chips. And of course, when it comes to gaming, Intel still steals the show. Now, let's move on to productivity. Here, things take a more dramatic swing. So our 2700X absolutely creams the last gen 1800X in our testing, with significantly higher scores in Cinebench and Asus RealBench, and shaving a cool one minute, 11 seconds off the classroom render time in Blender. The 1800X already beat out the Core i7-8700K in most of these, so the gap then is that much wider this time around. Impressive. And it looks like at least some of this is due to the improvements to cache latency, with our testing in Ida64 showing a pretty significant improvement of around 25% with higher bandwidth and improved memory latency to boot. Of course, what would a review of a new CPU be without overclocking results. Let's go to level three. Bam! So our 2600X still didn't wanna play ball with our pre-release firmware, but our 2700X with the auto tweak feature gave us 
predictably better results, although these gains are mainly limited to highly threaded workloads. Lightly threaded or gaming workloads understandably actually suffer slightly compared to the 100 MHz faster stock XFR clocks. Power consumption is still higher than Coffee Lake, but that's not really a surprise. What is interesting is that under load, our new chips are more power hungry. We think because Precision Boost 2 is keeping the CPU at higher speeds more often. This also translates into higher temperatures, which means we wouldn't really recommend doing a ton of overclocking with your stock cooler, as cool as the new Wraith Max RGB coolers might be. So then, at 329 for the high-end Ryzen 7 2700X and 229 for the six-core Ryzen 5 2600X, both of them $30 more than their non-X counterparts, AMD has managed to claw back a bit of the bang for the buck proposition that they enjoyed with Ryzen's first generation release. And perhaps more importantly, even though this is a new CPU and chipset, the obvious stability issues with high-speed memory in particular that prevented us from making a clear recommendation last time around are gone. So let's not kid ourselves, this is every bit as incremental as Intel's move from Sky Lake to Kaby Lake, and we are disappointed that it's not Zen 2 yet. But second generation Ryzen is a bit more worth your money than last time, which is a good thing. You know what else is a good thing? Mass drop! The concept is pretty simple to understand. The more people who commit to purchasing a certain product, the lower the price of that product goes. And today we're talking about the AKG K7XX configured by Massdrop. These are open-backed headphones with large cushy ear cups that have been tweaked to deliver a wide, locationally specific soundstage that puts you closer to the source. They feature a genuine leather headband, memory foam ear pads with velour covering, a two-year warranty serviced by AKG, and they ship out in two to three days. So check them out at the link below. Thanks for watching guys. If you disliked, you can hit that button. But if you liked the video, hit like, get subscribed, maybe consider checking out where to buy the stuff we featured at the links in the video description. Also down there is our merch store, which has cool shirts like this one and our community forum, which you should totally join.